Okay, we have E4 and C5 by David Pakman. That means he has been doing some studying because oh, yeah. he's been playing E5, and now we're getting D6 and Nidorf? Okay. All right, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, um, I think David has been preparing his openings from off his games. And so Bishop C4, which is what I would say most players who are not so experienced to play this move because they usually play it if black had played. Let me just change the position very quickly. E5, they often go knight f3 and f d6, bishop c4. But the difference between this and the game is that there's a pawn on c5 and not a pawn on e5. So this pawn can come to e6 and then to d5 later, as we saw with Carson and Scissors. So Nemo, early on, there's a bishop on c4, which likely makes you happy because you know, mm -hmm. you're the Italian player. Who is this opening favorite? I'm going to say this opening favor is XQC. I feel like XQC does better in open positions, positions where he can push pawns forward, kind of like the last game. Um, except this game, in this kind of game, he can actually push the pawns forward on the king side because that's the style of this opening. However, um, I don't know if he actually knows how to play this structure. It, this is, oh, any oh. raised d4? That's pretty good. Yes, it is. And Andrea. I like this. What? So. Uh, Nemo liking it from XQC side of things. It's an open position, which he seems to be more comfortable with. What about you? Mm -hmm. Do you think that David Pakman is the one who chose the opening, so he feels good about it, or does this favor XQC in your opinion? I don't mind David's side because I play the hype accelerated dragon, which is almost like you get in this exact position. Um, you trade the c5 pawn for d4 fianchetto. I think it's comfortable to play for black. So I, we don't know what you mean. So you, so you Frappuccino, right? Oh, yes, yes, Frappuccino. I forgot I have to speak, speak the intellectual language here. You, you speak the language of PogChamps. That's yes, a, thank you. Thank a you universal for teaching language. me, of course. <laughs> and yep. so both sides have castled. We have some good development for white in the center of the board. But Nemo, how should xqc continue here will he play a move like bishop g5 because that does feel like the move that the pop oh bishop oh no the oh, no. any bishop move but that one yeah oh uh, the amount of times that we've seen this fork today oh and and, and pack david backman is like i got Poor this XQC. i see this move. look at his oh, little no. face palm oh, oh. Uh, well it's not over. He may be going down a piece, but it's not over, especially yeah. because his pawn on mm -hmm. d6 will be weak. So let's say white plays bishop g3, the knight is captured, the queen takes. You likely will be able to get a second pawn on d6, and uh, the extra material doesn't make its presence felt just yet. Definitely. That is also if he makes the correct decision on which minor piece he should give. Yeah. Maybe he'll think to give the bishop instead of his knight here. It's also a critical decision. I mean, a move that XQC could potentially play is knight b5, which mm -hmm. will get you back the d6 ball, but give up the bishop. So the other option is to save the pair of bishops and, you know, attack the d-pawn leader. It's, it's, it's a, there's also some choices here for XQC. All the Pepe's in the chat are crying right now. <laughs> oh, no. Well, choice is a bad thing at this point because you know you're losing a piece. So spending time... Yeah. In addition to that, that doesn't seem like it's going to help your chances. So, um, yeah. If he can make the next few moves quickly, I do think that David will slow down a little as he's up material and he doesn't want a repeat of last week. So he will then start using some of his clock and trying to make sure that he wins the game on the board. So XUC needs to just make a move. Yeah, one thing that oh. players on this level, I think, should try more often is even when they're losing, try to put their opponents in time pressure and speed up because um, many of them crumble under time pressure. They yeah. really losing, just stick to, stick to speed. Hey, look, I do that in my Blitz games too, Same. you know? It, it's, it's a very good strategy. You just, you just pressure your opponent, have that confidence, bluff, you know, a lot of, exactly. a lot of things that can work. Yeah, and he's still burning clock now. He's down under seven minutes, and David oh. Pacman at 9.49 barely has used any time at this point. And it's unfortunate because as soon as XQC made the move, he did that face bomb. And I know. Oh. He's defeated inside, but maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, and this is another thing, right? You have to always remember to never give up because not giving up is also a really, really important part about playing um, chess, especially in a situation where anything could literally happen. You just, you just 
just play. Your opponent will probably blunder at some point, but you have to have the time. You have to have the right mentality to be able to catch that blunder at that point, which unfortunately won't happen if you're spending a lot of time right now. But this is also where not streaming is hurtful because when you're mm -hmm. streaming and you have a lot of people supporting you, even though you're not yeah. reading the chat, you feel energized knowing mm -hmm. that in XQC's case, 35, 45,000 yeah. people are watching. You you want to do it for them. Now he's not streaming and he's trying to do it for himself and maybe he doesn't feel as motivated in that regard. Right. That's a very interesting point. And I there, definitely feel energized when I have people in the chat supporting me. So yeah, I, mean, I can most definitely time, relate. When I'm losing, they're like, sad, you were losing again. Loser point of view only. So they're not always supportive. That's but true. I mean, that's true. XQC has very loyal fans. So mm -hmm. like for Force, and they were still cheering him on when she wasn't doing so well. Yeah. And I know, of course, it's it's okay to lose too. It's okay to lose. That happens. It always happens. But it's just like, you know, at the end of the day, they'll be here for, for XQC. The fans for are sure. here. Always. And they're certainly in the chat right now. I see them. Uh, showing off their love and support of XQC. And I like what he did, actually, putting his knight to b5, because if white were to receive a free move, and that's sometimes how you should think about the position, and David backlink puts his queen on b6, but let's say black and move like h6, a mm -hmm. random move. After the queen trade, there was knight to c7 trapping this rook on a8. So that's why David Pacman said, you know what, I don't want to give knight access to the c7 square. So he puts his queen on b6, and in comes XQC's knight to d6, and I do think that David Pacman will be wow. somewhat concerned about the attack on F7. Yeah, this is a very, very good strat from XCC. He's playing aggressive chess, which we like to see. Despite being down a piece, he's not giving up. I think, um, you know, just causing problems for your opponent is always a good idea. Yeah, I like, I like his idea a lot, putting pressure on F7. David is pretty good at spotting the tactics style, as Robert said, with Queen B6. So he probably won't move his rook anytime soon. And I think something that might be tempting to some people is queen takes b2, but you're taking your queen away from the defense of your... He did it. Wow, I was going to say, I didn't think that David was going to do that. Oh, this takes could the change pawn. the entire game. And Ooh. XQC, yeah, he can bring this knight into b5, wow. which threatens c7, threatens to replace the knight on d6 as you go after f7, and rook b1 will trap the Killer. queen down here. Oh, he fell for the poison pawn. Yeah, that's not a pawn that I thought he was going to take. So clearly, I can't predict all of their moves. So <laughs> I was yeah. a, a one-game commentator. Ooh. He's shaking his head. He knows he messed up. But well, the thing is, realize. yeah, I don't know if it's it's not that bad, but um, you know. It's, it's definitely going to complicate things for David. It's a lot more calculation than he probably expected. He's already up a piece. He probably is not thinking about all these kind of things. Um, he's just like, this game must be pretty easy for me. So XUC definitely has a good chance at, like, you know, making this game complicated by playing Knight to b5. Not an easy move to play, I must admit. He takes an f7, okay. which is going straight for the king. And so... There are some discovered checks, but you can probably even just take it if you'd like on f7. Not to mention that this knight on c3 can be captured because once you take on c3, the queen hits the bishop on c4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I think that's the winning move for black here through the eval bar drop. That's a hard move to play though, right? Because you're walking in to a discovered check. Yeah. If he continues with rook takes f7, then the same plan we were speaking about with knight b5 might still be possible. But maybe David will find the harder option. Well, rook f7 actually may be bad, but it's hard to see because queen d8 check oh. forces bishop back, and then I could take your knight on f6 because wow. everything is pinned. Yeah, there's a lot of tactics here. I mean, it's just that I don't. Will David see that? He might. He might. Um, but. You know, it's it's it comes down to almost a 50 50 percent chance between you taking off c3 versus you, you taking off seven. And it's so difficult for to walk into a check, right? By taking on c3, you're allowing a discovered check. But if David has been doing his tactics, if he feels like, let me just take a breath, it's just a check, it's not checkmate, mm -hmm. then he'll be able to take this knight on c3. But I feel like it's a really hard thing to do in a game like this. Uh, and he took on f7. Oh, oh and XCC, I think he sees it. I think he sees it. He's like, 
Yeah. He'll look at him. He's like, what? Ew, look at him. Then, yeah, he's got this. I wish we could hear him right now. Yeah. Oh, oh he, no. It's the ice skater, right? It's it's just going right across the board. It's not a background oh, checkmate. Oh my goodness! Because the bishop can block, but he wants to. Look bring at him! Kill. He's getting ready. <laughs> yeah, he just shook his head. He's like shaking off his sleep. You know, he's waking <laughs> up. Yeah, he's finally waking up. He thought the head shake. That was it. Yeah, he's I think. No longer. Ah, oh, David. Oh, and David Pacman also sees it. <laughs> the reactions are absolutely hilarious. Ooh. <laughs> he's like check. Pause champ. <laughs> exactly. You, you see the evaluation bar say checkmate in five moves. It's not so straightforward because it's not check, yep. check, check, he's checkmate. Done. But he found queen d8. So step one complete. After bishop f8, though, will he see that the rook is pinned and then he can win this knight and then the rook next? Or will he say, I'm going to take your bishop because that's hanging, which is still mm -hmm. not a bad decision for white, right? You're taking a piece there and the rook is still pinned. But I wonder if he is going to see. Queen takes f6 next as the rook is pinned to the king. These are some very, this is a very good position, very promising position for XQC, um, no matter what happens. And yeah. well, on, only one move available for David Pacman. Yeah, I was going to say, in positions like this, David should not be wasting any time because clearly mm -hmm. can't move his rook and knight is a free piece. He should spend a second. Good. He brings it back and will XQC find the dagger? Queen takes f6. <laughs> the dagger. The bing, the bang, and the boom all at once with the queen the taking bing on f7. Just bing. <laughs> oh, this is uh, this is the moment, you guys. Believe. Chat this believes. is the moment, you guys. Oh, I'm nervous, honestly. And I, my heart I'm... is racing. I have to admit. I hope he finds it because then we'll get an Armageddon. Maybe. Yeah, I'm... Armageddon is always fun to watch too. So. Yeah. And I think Dave... he's very focused. He is. David Pacman was baited into this. You know, he won a piece, which was great, but then his king started feeling a little iffy, and that's what happens when you leave the queens on the board. He could have traded queens, but then he was worried earlier. I'll just show that position really quickly. And he was worried about this knight coming into c7, so he decided to keep the queens on the board. And maybe, Andrea, you said this earlier, because he lost in an endgame when he was actually winning, maybe he just doesn't want to get to an endgame. Yeah, yeah maybe he's true. a little bit scared. And so here we sit. I, is he going to take an F6? I feel like the more he thinks, the, the more he's going to doubt himself a little. Yeah. I, it's like in these guys, oh, uh, he takes the rug. Okay, okay, it's still, it's still good. Still yeah. so yeah. good, but he's yeah. still winning. He's going to take this bishop next. That bishop is under attack. Or, do you think and, he'll see it or will try to save his knight instead? Well, thankfully for him, the, taking the bishop also defends Would the save. knight. Mm -hmm. But and he, he, but XUC doesn't seem that thrilled. You see him shaking his head. Yeah. Maybe he saw he could play queen takes f6 right after he played it. But no, I mean, I, there's no I going back just, now. I think it's just his thinking face, honestly. Okay. Well, he hasn't played queen takes c8. And that's a worrying sign as he did just decide yeah. to take that look there. That's what I was saying. I don't think. Oh, okay. Oh, Oof. the check? Wait. It's the one step knight. away, so close. Yeah, yeah, knight d7 is actually, knight bd7 is actually going to yeah. protect the bishop and block the check. All right, blocks the check, the rook protects the bishop, the bishop can also block on d7. And the reason why I will say this game is so far from over is there's a king on f7. So even if you block the first check, I don't think that David is happy about his king being mm -hmm. out here. And David is a good player. Right? We saw it in the matchup against Hafu, we're seeing it again today. Like he's capable, even having his king out in the open, he's capable of stifling and stymieing his opponent's threats and then playing for a win himself. But what do you two think? Do you think that the weak king is going to pose him some serious problems? I feel like it, it is It is going to pose a little bit of problem, but I'm a little bit worried about XQC's time as well. And he plays yeah. 97, just defending the bishop well, and I also just developing the knight. Black is pretty well defended here. I don't know mm -hmm. how much XCC can come after the Black King here. Yeah. Even with Queen C4 check, there's always King G7 or something. Right. You just don't have enough pieces because Black has three minor pieces for the Rook that was lost. That's a ton of material. Yeah. So how to, pre how to press forward here? Maybe F4 at some point? But F4 will allow... Queen to b6 check, 
getting those queens off the board, and that should make Black's king feel a lot better. Yeah, here he should be going for comfortable moves, especially with his time situation, like rook d1. Hopefully, the rook d1, you know, simple plan so that the bishop has to stay on c8 and develop the knight. Um, I'm more and more worried about his time, though. Yeah, the the time is yep clock. This is a yep clock moment, guys. Um, clock sticking down. XQC needs to play some active chess, stage. but it's a little bit hard finding a clear plan in a position where you're down material and you can't really attack his king anymore. You, you get, he's, he's, he's not down that much, but okay, he goes for the one check, but King, G, king G7 will secure the king. Oh, indeed. And then what will his follow-up be? Will he try to bring his knight to b5? He's shown that he likes the knight getting that square with a rook to b1 to attack the queen. Mm -hmm. It's not super easy for black to continue either, but with the three minor pieces. Uh, of course, David Pacman's position is excellent. Yeah, rook b1 would be like the fastest thing for time saving because he could get another tempo after rook b3. Mm -hmm. um, but now there's also a, a huge weakness on e6, so his knight is pretty useful. He could knight maneuver like knight b5, knight c7. There's lots of ideas for him, even though he's down. Yeah. Hey, getting the knight to e6 would be fantastic. And Nemo, what do you think? Is he going to go for knight b5 or maybe move the rook or play f4? Too many options. With it's a lot of options, time. yes. Nice. Oh, it plays knight b5. I like the prediction. Okay. Andrea. Seems like you're turning into the uh, the pog whisperer here. I think I'm just the Pago whisperer. We get each other, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brain. Yeah, I always I always get jokes how well, we have done many similar Pago moments. The move the move is great. It also threatens Rook to B one, trapping the Queen on B two. So that Queen True. needs to move its way back with a move like Queen to B four, and that way your King starts feeling a little bit safer as your Queen is trying to maybe even get back to B seven, but the queen is in danger of being trapped, which is not actually easy to see uh, for either player. Yeah, I I do think that David Pacman, even going by the basic principles of positions in which he's up material, he should play queen before. It's almost his only move as well. So let's see if he plays it. I think considering earlier he didn't realize the danger of queen b2, I have a feeling he might not see rook b1. That is true too. That is very, very true. I Honestly, it's it's like... Yeah, if he sees Queen before this game, it's gonna be very difficult for XQC to play. But if he, if you know, if he, if he doesn't see it, then XQC has every single chance to win this position. Well, let's go back to that thought about match one, where we got to an end game, and that's when David didn't feel comfortable. So perhaps because of that he will not want to trade queens. But like we can ask him in the interview. I have no degree of certainty. Yeah. With respect to that notion, but it doesn't seem like he wants to trade queens. Yeah, that would definitely be his best bet. He might just be reluctant for any queen trade, which is holding him back a lot. And, Andre, your idea with knight coming to c7, and that you you looked at e6 square, and you said, that's one where my pieces belong, whether it's my queen or my knight, and that knight would head right to e6 and cause black some serious problems with that check and hitting the bishop as well. So the knight is trying to make a long journey from c3 into e6, and the first step was definitely a good one. Yeah, that's the main thing I try to teach, like, any of my PogChamp students as well, like, pointing out weak squares immediately after a move, because then it's very easy for them to formulate a plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a very, very smart idea. And, you know, even despite being down material, there's always things to play for, right? And that's a big part about not giving up. So David's time is running down low as well. Uh, we might see a time scramble yeah, between what? these two players today. But I saw between Hafu. Oh. Oh, the queen is. Oh, wait, that's actually a really good move. Because, yeah, because oh. queen. Oh, wait, he in... played quick. Wait, no, yeah. that was mind. quick. Wait, he, that was he, good. He invited he has the knight. A plan. Yeah. This is getting dangerous for the king, even though it saved the queen. Right? It, it was a trade off. Now the queen has the a3 square to jump to eventually, but you first have to move the rook away, and then Andrea's plan is going to show up on the board. Yeah, yeah, this is a very, very good plan. And you bring your more material into the attack, more chances you'll have for, you know, just causing mayhem in general. And David has to move his rook. Ooh, ooh wait, he that's that's a really, really interesting move. He, he's like, I absolutely refuse to let knight e6 happen, attacking mm -hmm. the queen. Um, wow. Yeah, wow. that's a pretty brilliant move. 
but mm-hmm. I think I don't I don't even know honestly the best response for White yet. I, have I to think, calculate. I think he needs to play quickly and play Queen to D three. And if this rook moves from A eight, you play rook to B one and try to get this knight on B six. So the good news oh, is wow. the E six square is covered. The bad news is the knight goes in the same line as the queen. So and also XQC's time is oh, and he plays knight yeah. E six anyways. Well, he won't be losing the queen, but bishop takes E six. And uh, white will have no more minor pieces, which also means his attack is going to be a lot more difficult where you don't have pieces. Yeah, with the queen d3 move, it's honestly a pretty good move, like what the plan robber pointed out, but I don't think XQC wants to give up on his plan that he was so emotionally invested in, which is a common mistake that Mm -hmm. I also do a lot. Yeah, and here David can take this knight directly on e6. He can actually move his king, and that's a very hard thing to do is when you're in check and it looks like pieces are coming after you to leave it on that square, especially considering the bishop seat hasn't moved yet. But he can, he does take it, but he could have moved his king first, and that way the knight would have been on a vulnerable square. So Mm -hmm. we have a trade, and rook b1 next is a very big threat, but look at David Pakman go. He attacks the queen on uh, e6 first. David Pakman has been playing very solidly. Very, very solidly. Like, it's it's something else to see, you know? Because most people in this um, in this pod champ so far have been mostly involved with pushing pieces forward, not caring so much yeah. about what their opponent does. But David Pakman has this prophylactic kind of thinking going on. And it's, it's really impressive because he's like, yeah, my opponent wants to play 96. I'm going to stop that. Um, on all of these kind of ideas that you ha- we don't see that often because everyone tends to get a little bit more tunnel vision. That's a really good observation. Time is ticking. Uh Yeah, the time. Oh, Oh, yep, clock, guys. Yep, clock. Oh, God. No, no. Okay. So, Rook B1, I understand the point, but will David Pakman see that he can actually. (laughs) Will he finally trade Queen? Will he take on B1, though? Because that's what he can do. As if Queen takes B1, you take the Queen, the Black Rook takes the White Queen, and if you take here, then the White, the Black Queen continues to be crazy. And take rooks before finally taking the queen. So let's go back to the live board because, in fact, rook e6, rook b2. So we are trading. Hanging b7, though. Wow. And XUC okay. takes that. All right. No hesitation there. I actually think the rooks are better than the minor pieces in this game. I do think so, too. Um, just because I feel like XQC can utilize them a lot better than David Pacman will know how to use a bishop and knight, realistically speaking. It's just not something you get very often, I feel mm-hmm. like in when you're newer to chess so you're like trying to coordinate these two knights and a bishop but the rooks you know they just want to line up yeah rook bros rook bros exactly so wait wait, rook d8 and that hits like the knights it hits the bishop here things are getting awkward yeah oh he plays it so fast wow look at that tactical genius good excuse me right here that was a very good instinct and now it is looking that the game is turning in XQC's favor. Not that he's mm-hmm. better just yet, but we've seen that David Pacman, you know, he's been so solid throughout. Right now it's getting uncomfortable with all of his minor pieces under threat by these rooks. Wow, look at that. Very yeah. impressive tackle gameplay from XQC. Um, his time is running low, but you know, the, the instincts are there from a pro gamer. And, and look I- at this, David Pacman about to even up the clock situation as he is going into 22. 21 and a 20 that is seconds. That's main weakness. Oh, that's a knight that you can just take. Oh. So if XG yep. does it, look at that. Oh my gosh. So David can oh. take on E4, the free pawn. He yeah. does it. Ooh. This Have is. To this push F3 or. All right. Yep. The reason I don't love it is because Bishop C5 oh, check, but I think true. that David without time is just going to retreat his knight and is mm-hmm. did. And good move. Hitting the pawn, putting some pressure on the knight, though the knight is protected. You just can't forget that certain pieces are defended. Now, what you guys were saying earlier about the rooks being easier, like, personally, I prefer the minor pieces, but at this level, just, like, these natural rook moves are so much easier to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just have to put your uh, rooks together, and they'll be safe. But with minor pieces, you can lose them at any time. Right. And the knight on b7, in particular, is an awkward piece. Bring this rook to d5. And you just can coordinate them so well. Rookie three is also plenty good. Just do not fall victim to the ice skater, right? Mm-hmm. You need to you need to make space for your king at some point. So XUC first needs to save his rook. He just did, did that, and eventually he needs to push some of his pawns from his king, preferably his G pawn. Yeah, 
And as long as XQC doesn't lose his rook accidentally, he, he's defending his rook really well. Um, David is going to struggle a little bit with finding moves because... He's finally up. Yeah, up on time too, up on time. This is okay. a big, big, you know, switch from, from the most of the game. And look at him go with G4. Wow. Maybe he'll try to go H4 and create a checkmating net. Oh, that'd be beautiful. But I H4. think David trying to defend with the rook H8. Maybe. Oh, that's just so passive. There must be a checkmating player. Rook to D5 as well. Yeah, to H4 hit this would be beautiful. Oh, yeah, he oh okay. He keeps hitting himself in the head. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he's seeing, but... Uh... He's definitely fantasy. Oh, G5, but... Bishop G5. Okay, so so now you don't no longer have H4, uh -oh. but... He oh, I don't know about losing the F pawn, though. Yeah, he doubled up his rooks, which is stacking the rooks, generally a good strategy, but not when it causes jobs to pump. But look, David Pacman did only 8.7 seconds when he made that move. And H3, XQC. Oh, okay, now, whoa. But rook okay, D1. so hitting the rook, right. But rook D1 is going to come okay, back. Rook no. Okay, defend. Or, or defending, that's good too. And now he could go F4, G5. Yeah, yeah. F4 would be a really good move here. F4, Black natural. has to play G5. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Wow, look oh, at him wow, go. Look at that. Knight d5 would be an X. There it is by yes. David Pacman going right after the pawn and look at Okay, XTC. he's going for the pass pawn instead. I like this. This is, like this is really good stuff from both sides. Very impressive how they're performing under oh. time pressure. And now, oh. whoa. so David wants to bring his knight to f4, it looks like. That's kind of the idea. But look at XQC. Bring his rook in. The a6 pawn can be captured if he wants it. Or rook to d1, bring his next rook in. f6. Uh. Wait, that's a free you pawn. Wondered, there's yeah. the yeah, base yeah, pawn the, the head smack came in. It's okay. But he, he's okay if he just takes an a6. Yeah, he rook lost. Okay, rookie seven check's also fine. He lost a very valuable pawn, but there's so many chances. He yeah. has another pass pawn. Maybe maybe the pin is actually going to work in XQC's favor, too, just because your pieces are kind of tied down. If rookie six happens, uh, you'll probably lose the eight pawn. A lot of good chances here for white. Was it rook e6? Oh, there we go. Oh, never mind. Good move, rook a7. The knight can't move. and the Oh, the rook's hanging. The rook's and hanging on the face. happened. Oh, my. oh he yes, took it. He, he took it. Oh. XQC sees it and wins the rook. David All right, this is looking like pressure again. This is looking like XQC's game now. Oh my We're going to see Armageddon. XQC. Yep. What a Look at that. XQC did not crumble under time pressure. And so he needs to make sure he keeps his rooks defended. King G7. Bring your rook to f5 or to f3. Just make sure you do not drop that rook. And bring, oh, he's going for the checkmate. Yep. But bishop g3. Oh, bishop oh, no, g3. No, 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 no. He got the rook back. Oh, God. Oh. He's so mad. No. Okay. Oh, oh but it's okay. But it's okay. White still has really good practical winning chances in this position with the two pass pawns. Oh, no. It's oh, not over, guys. It's not push, over. Push Chat, the a pawn. Not over. Yeah. Push the a pawn. King up is okay, too, but push that a pawn. I really wish we could have heard his raging moments. But oh my yes. Gosh. And King King D3. He needs to make sure not to go King D5. Because if he goes King D5, there'll be Knight B6. Do not go King D5. Because Knight B6 forks. Oh, hold it. Oh. And there's still a very good chance. I mean, XTC technically is still winning in this position he won't just fall because. For another rook. No. Yeah, oh, he won't. Move. Oh, he pushed very his pawn. Beautiful. <sighs> okay, good move by XQC. And David, Knight B6. Good move by him. So do, you need to keep the rook on the A file to, so you don't drop your pass. <gasps> oh, God. Oh. There goes the other rook. Oh, Ooh. no. Aww. Oh, so no. Oh, man. Oh, okay. That, That's not so sad. Good. This was such a great yeah. game. That was that, an amazing game. Excuse that me. was painful, but it's not over yet. It's not over yet. He does have a pass pawn. And he can, King D5, if he can bring that king in, but there's Knight C7 check. So if David oh, Packman no. finds Knight C7. If he doesn't, ah, oh, no, he did. David oh, has. it's hopeless. And wow. XQC, unfortunately for him, he had two rooks against two minor pieces, but both of his rooks have now been captured, and he's just going to try and push his pass pawn, hoping that he can get to the other side. It just seems like David Packman has it under control now. Wow, what a game Bishop this was. D8. It was a very good game by XQC and just the time at the oh, end. You oh, know? If he goes King E8, there's C7. Oh. So he's, he needs to make sure he does not bring his King yeah. E8 and he brings his Bishop back to stop there again. Guys. Yeah, he sees it. He's not allowing okay. any more room for counterplay. Bishop A5. Keep that Bishop on the diagonal. 
Yeah, once once you get that seep on. Oh, David looks like he he he's just um he just smacked his head a little bit over there. I'm not sure if he sees Bishop. I'm sure he's gonna find a way to um play Bishop a5, but he, he's a little <gasps> Oh <gasps> my goodness! Oh, okay, oh, but he brought the knight for the pawn on c7. But, but, but how he needs it? You know, the thing is, if King of six, then okay, he brought the knight up, King to d6 now. Oh, and if he goes knight e4, he, he might play knight e4 to keep checking. He might think that, no, look at No, knight a6, okay. Wow, that's yeah. that's a really good move. Okay, but there's, there's good chances to here still. It's not over. It's not over. It's there's definitely not over. Very good chances for XQC to hold this position. And now knight b8 could have been played to take a position. Oh, oh he's just going to create the pass pawn. And then the king, what? black's king is really close to the to white's pass pawn, so the promotion is going to happen from, from David. So David breaks free that pawn. King c8 yeah. to b7 would be like the only chance that you have to try to chase that knight away. But it seems like David Pacman, he wow. withstood some he serious tried. pressure this one. Oh my gosh. It feels like David is during time pressure, like we saw earlier and uh, the other day. He, he's, he, he doesn't do too well under time pressure. So <gasps> he's only. Oh, no! Oh, he gave up the knight. And he just lost the knight there. Okay, but he promotes, but does he know how to use a queen yeah, to... Yeah, I don't know if he knows how to win the send game. But his, a draw is still winning for him, unfortunately, right. for XQC. That's right, That's a draw true. is still winning. But I'm not sure if he knows how to use a queen to... A queen and king combo for this. The idea is that you have to check the king so that the king goes in front of your the pass pawn on C8, yeah. and then you bring your king over slowly to capture the pawn. But um, that's a very advanced end game idea. Right, yeah, especially in a position can... like this, because you're forcing the opponent's king up the board. And like queen f6, that's not the right start, but he can just give checks forever, and as you said, make the draw, and mm -hmm. that way win the match in that manner. And he knows this too. Yeah, he definitely, he can just sack his queen for c7, then take the h pawn. He can force the draw in many ways. I mean, force winning this match. Right. A queen e4 check. This is something that um, I, oh, he allowed the queen. That's all right. It's uh, yeah. I I think he didn't see that, but the king is close enough to the pawn where he's gonna be able to capture it. And this will be a force draw. And I really is... why is he yelling? It's like he didn't expect oh. this to be a draw. I really yeah. wish the XCC were streaming so we could have heard his I thoughts. Know. That was one of, if not the best games of both the first and this pog champs. I mean, that Definitely. was really something. It was very impressive. XCC oh. played very well, Sir David. Yeah, huge respect to both players. XCC played amazingly, and so did David, of course. But XCC had a very good winning chances here, you know. Might see a even better gameplay from his next game. Well, we'll hear from the players in just a few moments. We're going to take our final break, and when we return, we will have XQC and David Pacman and hear how they feel after what was an epic battle. And we return with both David Pacman and XQC. And David, we'll start with you. Congratulations. And I have to ask, how nervous were you down the stretch of that second game when you both were in immense time trouble? I, I was getting pretty nervous, yeah. And it, what I tried to remember was with increment last time in game two, I just played the entire rest of the game as if I had 25 seconds left, even though I had built it back up to like two minutes. So I tried to remember that that was not the case this time. But this, it was a major, major collapse. And I'm lucky to have, uh, I mean, listen, after last match, I'll take any win that I can get. <laughs> but um, there was a bit of a collapse there. We're going to have to be analyzing that one for a while. And XUC, you played a really great second game with some aggressive play there after you had blundered a piece. Did you feel like your gameplay was better today? Because we were all quite impressed. Uh, no, I, I blundered so hard. I was kind of defeated there, dude. But my, my boy, a white shirt, Walter, had to push a draw on a 600 ELO player. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I draw, dude. Come on. I was going for the home stretcher, dude. <laughs> yes, well, listen, I'm lucky to have gotten the draw. I almost lost, so. Right. Yeah, you both played Fair really, enough. really well today. It was an amazing, amazing game. Yeah, and well, let's look at the second game because the first game um, was pretty wild, as was the second one. And we'll go back to that critical moment where David, 
you did not trade queens uh, when you could have, when you were up a piece. Was that because you were having some PTSD from last week against Hafu in the end game? Wait, so this is game two, which move? Um, you went your queen out to b6 on move 10 when you could have traded queens off, for instance, and you were up a piece for a pawn at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess I just didn't see any particularly good reason to trade the queens, and then it would have brought, I, I just, you know, obviously I'm terrible at this, so who knows why I would do anything, but I, mean, <laughs> I don't be so hard, hard on yourself. Yeah, you're doing great, you're doing great. <laughs> I, I, you I don't need to be so hard on yourself. I couldn't justify trading the queens, so I figured, that there was maybe some opportunity with the two knights and the bishop stacked up on the BNC files to maybe later get the queen there. And, and in fact, had I not collapsed later, I was looking at taking either the C pawn or the knight on C3, but I never got, got the time really because things fell apart. In XUC, you went for a vicious attack with knight takes F7, and after rook takes F7, it was actually you who had a chance to end the game pretty quickly because you brought the queen down I was like, that's a good start. And after Bishop F8, did you consider the move queen takes knight on F6? Uh, listen, I, it's one of those things where like good chess players see like all scenarios and they see them through. Like if I think of a scenario and I, and I see it through and there's another one that appears, it's like I forget what the other one was like and I can't like, like do a fusion. And I, I, I didn't remember that um, with that new line of thought that Rook was pinned. Right. And I was like, okay, well, a rook will take queen. I had forgotten uh, that I already thought that that plan out. So I, I didn't know, like, I just forgot that yeah. rook was pinned. It, it's that just bad. A, that was a very complex way of saying you just missed the pin, but I see. <laughs> yeah, we, we get it. <laughs> we understand. Well, you're juggling variations, right? And David, I'm sure you can attest to this as well, that when you're dealing with so many different ideas that in one line, you may remember a certain tactic, but in another, you forget, right? Uh, yes, forgetting is, um, I mean, I've forgotten way more than I remembered in this game already. That's the crazy thing. And dude, w with that queen trade middle, I was like, dude, take my queen, dude. Take it, man. <laughs> if, you want, if you want to win, dude, dude I want to see blood, man. We're, we're, if you're going to get the W out of this, I want you to fight for it, dude. Come get my pieces, bro. <laughs> Queen Sis. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. Yeah, and I guess you, you guys did get into this queenless position, and it started to turn in XQC's favor, where, David, you were in time trouble, and you were fending it off for a while, but then you got into this position where your knight was pinned. I'm going to go to that moment right now. And unfortunately, you didn't, either recall that your rook was hanging or you just didn't see that the rook on f1 was staring down through your knight, the rook on f8. Yep. No, it was a fiasco. And I mean, I got lucky on a couple of uh, forks at the end where I was able to pick up some pawns and sort of like salvage it. But it was, uh, it, it was by sheer instinct alone. And my instinct is usually not super good. So that was, it was lucky for everybody. Also, and he, he no scoped my, uh, my rook and I didn't even see it. He slid <laughs> all across the board. Yep. No scope. Yep, that was a nice that, find. That was a clutch save by you, David. I think up in the, up, up until that point, I was like, "We're good. We're going to Armageddon." <laughs> yeah. yeah, we thought so too. Yeah, because X, you see, you were just trying to give that quick checkmate, right? You were just trying to do the ladder with the rooks, and yeah, I was trying to do the, the scissor lift or whatever you call that, where you do like uh, <laughs> like like chick 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 chick. Yeah, 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 yeah the ladder. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was certainly aware that that could be coming. So I was trying to think of, you know, making sure I had a spot to kind of hide the king if it came to that. And unfortunately, like with f5 and h5 covered by the pawn, uh, I was, I knew I needed, I knew I needed forks. I was mm -hmm. looking for utensils. I would have taken anything, <laughs> but I was looking for forks. <laughs> well, you got yeah. one of them. And then XQC still had a good position. And unfortunately for him, he dropped the rook here on a8 when the knight came to b6. So uh, was now, what's off. interesting is I'm looking at the evaluation bar. When I got this fork, it went more in his favor. Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. It's kind of complicated. The position is still winning for White because of the pass pawn. And uh, XUC started right. on the right foot, and he tried to push that pawn all the way through. But unfortunately for him, you were being all tricky with your knight. And knight, yeah. do you think the knight is the trickiest piece for you guys? Because I feel like that's been the theme in PogChamps. 
You, you know what? You know what? I, I feel like lately after doing a bunch of puzzles, I think Knight is the only piece that I actually put thought in. Like, um... <laughs> Maybe yeah, I, I agree, and I agree yeah. in that because I know that it's trickier. I feel like I also am thinking way more about like in two or three moves, where could the knight be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And after this, I mean, once you lost the rook X, you see there went your winning chances. Uh, it felt, and uh, David was able to secure the half point he needed. So what a crazy match it was! I mean, Andrea, what thoughts do you have of that matchup? Any questions for either player? Um, I don't for xqc like i thought this was one of his best games out of all pog champs and i know he took a day off or i don't know how much of the day which is very rare for him were you preparing a little bit before this like doing any puzzles today or did you go into no. it like last time you just I, played I, guys before i had this little uh rare tummy ache so i was just chilling i was just sleeping okay. and napping well you played very well but okay so you didn't prepare yourself for it but it's okay because you still did great that's all right um, yeah. Am I am I out completely, or do I have a chance to to redeem? It? Um, well, we don't know because these uh, other two players in your group will be playing not tomorrow, which is a rest day, but the day after. So we'll see how that shakes out. But I think that you still have a chance, and if not, you'll be in the consolation bracket. And we know that you can be a force in that. If ah, uh, uh, cool. Uh, okay, sure, makes sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, David, I have a, a question for you because. Throughout, you've been very solid, and maybe in the first match, your first game, the opening was a little bit uh, risky. It feels like you have a good foundation. So what is your chess background like, and what have you been doing lately to work on your game? Uh, my background is really about 18 months ago, I just started playing online. Um, up until that point, I did... I was extremely solid on how the pieces move, so like I would never think, you know, a rook moves diagonally like i was super solid on that type of thing but um no i mean i've just been playing online for 18 months and then just you know training training for this quite frankly oh well you've been training well it seems and uh you have a very impressive foundation as i've said and it seems like you you know you're a very solid player like you know how to minimize the risk for yourself most often and then that causes problems for your opponent so i've been impressed by that now, quick, uh, what was the, the riskiness of the in the opening? Just the opening in general is a risky one? So I meant the first game against yeah. Hoffer. Yeah. Oh, oh, and against Hoffer. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. God. That's what you call a gambit gone bad. I mean, listen, <laughs> it's called a gambit for a reason, right? And uh, I was on the, the wrong end of that one. Yeah. No, today was a different story. The game against Hoffer was the one I was referring to, but it seems yeah. like you've shored that up. And Nemo, any final questions before we let these two players go? No, I just have to say both players played absolutely amazing today and it's great to see XQC, you know, play really, really well. And there's always a chance to, you know, win the last game, um, whether it's win the entire Constellation bracket or just win the last match. It's a lot of great, great chances here for both of you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you both. It was awesome. All, All right, right. Thanks, thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. All right, guys. Have a good rest of the day. Goodbye. Bye. Take care.